Hello and welcome to yet another video here on the YouTube channel STF Wargaming Studio. My name is Andreas Norwegian Viking and this is Wargaming News. So I've been absent for quite some time with the Wargaming News. Uh, obviously my work schedule has been drastically upped uh, from nothing to a lot. Um, insanely a lot actually. So a um, so bit less time than, uh, than I would like maybe to, to have for, for the hobby stuff. Uh, or what I've grown accustomed to, but I will fit as much as I can. Uh, the channel will still be going forward, we'll still be doing battle reports, we'll still be doing unboxings and we'll still be doing hobby vlogs. Uh, we'll travel to conventions, we'll travel to Articon, stuff like that still will happen, but um, and we will still try to get a video every single day. But uh, we'll diversify a bit, we'll uh, get some uh, some more content creators, um, well, more people will create content uh, and, uh, and other stuff will be doing back uh, behind the scenes as well. But um, this video will predominantly be about Warhammer Fest uh, as well as some new revelations. So first of all, um, it was announced uh, earlier this week, well last week actually, that uh, well, it was actually announced way back when on Twitch stream that Farmer Maggot and the Hobbit Sheriffs will be returning quite soon. And we now know the date they will be available uh, for purchase this coming Saturday on the Game Switch website as well as the Warhammer World store. Uh, we can purchase, of course, all the Middle Earth range in store. Uh, and this is fantastic because finally we'll have, well, not all of them because we're still missing Banderbrass, but uh, <laughs> all the rest of the hobbits will now be available. Um, so, uh, so now you can probably feel uh, a, a fantastic hobbit army, um, minus Banderbrass, of course. Uh, which is great, and I hope they continue releasing more and more out of production kits. Uh, I know people are clamoring for Knights of the Lamroth on foot, so, um, so do, do give that a chance if you're watching. Um, people in charge. So um, next up we, we did have more news. This is regarding Warhammer Fest. So um, Warhammer Fest has a slew of exclusive models that are predominantly available on the, uh, the Warhammer, uh, Warhammer World uh, store all year round but they're taking it to, uh, to the Rico Arena um, this coming Saturday and Sunday to um, to be on show there, they will have a early release on Alpharius, uh, the Primarch of the uh, the Alpha Legion, uh, for the Horus Heresy range. They will also have um, Grombrin, no, not Grombrindal, uh, Joseph Bugman as both a head coach and a um, a star player for Blood Bowl, and. The Goblin Mercenaries for Mid-Earth will finally be available for the first time. So this is a multi-part resin kit from Forge Old, something we haven't seen that much of, uh, which will include 12 um, gun, well, not <laughs> Goblin Mercenaries, uh, in addition to a Goblin Mercenary Captain. So they, they have alluded to that there will be lots of interchangeable parts and weapons and stuff like that, so you can mix and match. So the 24 you need uh, for a scenario playthrough of the There and Back Again book will be a breeze because there are 12 different sculpts, I believe, and um, then again, you can mix parts to make them even more different, which is fantastic. Um, I, I just feel that is great. Um, we need more. <laughs> I know Andrew like uh, Warbats. Uh, I would personally like the Catapult Troll. I so would like the Catapult Troll. So. Here are some predictions. Um, so, I haven't done predictions in quite some time, but I've, uh, even though I've been working quite a lot, I've been, been following up on, on stuff and uh, checking out all the blogs and all the forums and stuff like that and reading. Because that's what I do. People always ask me how I know the things I know. And the thing is, I don't really know. Uh, the information is there mostly clear as day. But I, I read and I analyze and I sometimes I'm right uh, and sometimes I'm wrong. Uh, I've been wrong in the past and, and I'll happy, happily be wrong again. Um, I'm, I'm not infallible, uh, nobody is. So if, I, if this is, well, uh, 
stuff doesn't pan out, um, then I predicted wrong, and that's a prediction. I am not a seer, I can't tell the future. Although I do know there is a rulebook coming out, and I do know some of the changes in it, uh, because I read between the lines. So, um, yes. So, for Warhammer Fest, I foresee a couple of things. So, we, we've all been waiting for the Middle-earth rulebook. I don't think they will unveil this at Warhammer Fest. Um, I hope they will, but I don't think they will. Um, I, I think the original schedule has been pushed back. Uh, reason for this is two twofold. Uh, there are there are some things that have happened, um, uh, like the scheduling for the book have happened. I know they've been taking pictures for the book uh, or a book um, in the uh, the picture room they have uh, at the the Warhammer World uh, offices. And, and that seems too close for a three-month um, book production thingy and they also have to uh, do all the editing and stuff like that as well uh, around the pictures. So I think it's too close. So I, I will move my original prediction of, uh, of before June, uh, just before June or in the beginning of June, to Yeah, why not Articon? Why not? Um, I did hope the book would be out before Articon, but I don't know yet anymore. Um, so that's my new prediction, uh, Articon, because it makes sense, um, and and yeah, well, we'll see. So um, I'm not so sure anymore, but I'm, I'm sure about some of the changes in it. But what I hope you will see is more stuff. So, although they can show us books, they have already spoiled, um, not spoiled, they've been showing us that the uh, that future publications, uh, not necessarily the rulebook itself, uh, will be themed around uh, Osgiliath and the Battle of Pelennor Fields. Uh, and we've already seen with the release of the, uh, the Mahud War uh, Beastmaster um, that um, that there are things um, being done with the Lord Rings range and new stuff being produced for it and which we obviously uh, already knew. Uh, so I hope that they would uh, look at the Hobbit line uh, and maybe give us a sneak peek uh, like production uh, shots in the seminar or, uh, or even on display in cabinets, uh, production work in progress, or, um, or uh, finished models of the following. A cat's ball troll is sorely needed. Um, with its imminent inclusion into Mr. Mountain's um, lists, as well as its being available for Good and the bad list, I do hope this will be uh, given as a model. I do pre predict this to be a roughly a, a between 80 and 100 pound model, which because it will be big. It will be on a dragon base, I believe, and it will be huge. <laughs> uh, four, four or five goblins in the howder doing stuff, I think it will be huge. So it probably will be pricey. Um, but with the quality of the forge models, um, I can't blame them, and, um, and you only need the one. So, it's okay, for me, at least. Uh, I know there are split opinions about prices, so I won't talk uh, much more than my prediction about it. Uh, regarding the price for the, uh, for the Goblin Mercenaries, I predict this to be a £40 box, because the models are smaller than the Iron Hills, but you get a captain. Uh, so that's my prediction on that. Uh, I also hope that they will r finally wrap up the troop choices for Gundabad and give us the Warbats. Um, so what they show at uh, Warhammer Fest will be the next three months. So it will be until the end of August. And we will probably see new things at Articon as well. So, uh, so it fits around nicely with three months and then three months and then three months because the last time was in February and that was, uh, was uh, Throne Skulls. So every three months they have a seminar show stuff. 
So it's cool. Uh, and and I, I do hope that they will show something new for the Lord of the Rings as well. Uh, and what could this be? And I've been racking my head around this and um, I, I hope that they will announce uh, some new re-releases uh, centered around uh, the, um, the Pelennor Fields and, uh, and stuff like that. So I hope that they will re-release the Serpent Riders and Serpent Guard as well as the um, Knights of the Lamb of on Foot, Angbo and um, Angbo the Fearless and Fallen the Fat. Uh, I hope they will re-release uh, as well as doing here. I um, hope they will re-release him. Uh, just center it around the entirety of that uh, of that thing. Uh, Airman Knight of the Pelnor because it's much a nicer model than the uh, the original Airman. Um, so, so yeah. Those kind of things I, I do want them to do, but for new stuff, I would like to see them um, maybe debuting a new character. We all know there will be a new, well we don't all know, but most of you have heard me talk about uh, a new Gondor hero um, that uh, Adam talked cryptically about on a Twitch stream. And, and I think this will be Hurin. Um, because he's featured as a character in the movie, um, which was confirmed by the big, big book, the um, motion picture thing, Weta Workshop came out with it last year, I think. Huge book, like this big. Um, and he's, he's pictured uh, as a cast member uh, with the name Hurin. So, uh, so I do hope that they will um, they uh, they will bring him in, um, giving him like a Captain Plus stat line, the old Captain Plus three point one one maybe, and some cool specials. I don't know enough about the character to actually predict what he can do, but I hope something will happen there, or maybe um, more characters for Rohan. Um, we've already seen rumblings about Elfhelm um, being in there and possibly well Grimbold already has a character uh, who's the other one? it'll come to me so, so yeah um, new characters because Forge will do those best uh, foot mounted sculpts and um, possibly even going as far to give uh, foot mounted well mounted sculpts for for long and uh, an angbot could possibly also be cool um, hindering people there are enough people in the world that can't do conversion work that great and it will also take business away from people ripping off the license um, I don't mind people using proxy miniatures when other miniatures are available um, but I, I have stated in the past that SDF has to take a, a firm, firm stance against um, against uh, third-party miniatures uh, profiteering on um, on existing IPs uh, with their with their like alternate thing. Um, and and I'm very happy that one of these companies are now doing their own stuff, um, which isn't which, which could be tied into it, but they are now doing their own thing, uh, which is fantastic, but I did hope that they would remove some old stock, which is blatantly obvious, uh, that they are selling as, uh, as proxy miniatures uh, for this game. So I do hope that Game Switcher takes a firm stance on this and, uh, and just clears off these, these holes in line that we now have to convert to, to make them become available uh, again. So, um, so yeah, that's that's my take. I hope that we will see a debut of some new character for Lord Rings. I hope that we will see uh, some older products going back to stock, and I hope that we will get Warbats and uh, Cannibal Troll, and maybe an um, Armored Azog. Um, but that's just me wanting that model because it would look fantastic. So um, that's all I have time for for my Thursday rumbling. I uh, hope you got through this uh, without any fuss. Uh, sorry about me going um, um, um uh, all the time because 
I'm, I'm tired after a day of work. I'm painting. I've been doing a lot of painting today and I'm really happy about that painted Bilbo, the old Bilbo. 2001 model, one of the very first models that came out for Lord of the Rings. I'm really happy with that. You'll see that on Monday in my hobby vlog. So, um, so yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. Until next time, I've been Andreas the Legion Viking and this was Wargaming News. Please comment, like, share and subscribe and consider supporting STF on Patreon using the link in the description below. And as ever, support your hobby.